This is a look at Building Bridges San Francisco with WTPN and their special guest, Du Wei Ming, Professor of Confucius and many other things. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of WTPN uh, presenting Building Bridges San Francisco. I'm your host, Mark Mosini. And uh, the aim of our show is to promote peace, love, unity, and brotherhood. And uh, in today's show, first I'd like to introduce our guest uh, and give a little bit of a background uh, about him. Uh, we are very honored and privileged to be here. Uh, his name is Du Wei Ming. Uh, he's a very well accomplished person, but more importantly, he's just a very decent and delightful individual. Um, du is a lifetime professor of philosophy and dean of Institute for Advanced Humanistic Studies at Peking University, and research professor and senior fellow of Asia Center at Harvard University. Uh, he was born in February 1940 in Kunming, China. He grew up in Taiwan and obtained a BA in Chinese Studies at Tungai University in 1961. He received both his MA uh, in 1963 and PhD in 1968 from Harvard University. He has been a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences since 1988. He has taught Chinese intellectual history, philosophies of China, and Confucian studies at many universities during his tenure, and most notably at Harvard University uh, since 1981 through 2010. He has been a member of the Peking University faculty since 2009. He is also on the board of the Chinese Heritage Center in Singapore an international advisor of Rahman University in Malaysia, a participant of the World Economic Forum, and a co-moderator of the Aspen Seminar on the Chinese in the Global Community. Du was, al du was also invited by the United Nations to join the group of eminent persons to facilitate the dialogue amongst civilizations in 2001. And he gave a presentation on civilizational dialogue to the executive board of UNESCO in 2004. Du Weiming was also selected as representative of the Federation uh, of International Philosophical Societies in 2008. Du has served as director of the Harvard Yenching Institute, chair of the Committee on the Study of Religion, and the chair of the Department of East Asian Languages and Civilizations at Harvard University. He is currently chair of the advisory board of the Institute of Chinese Literature and Philosophy, Academia Sinica, vice chair of the board of directors of the International Confucian Association in Beijing, and president of Contemporary, an intellectual journal published in Taiwan. Du has authored seven books in English and more than a hundred articles primarily focusing on the modern transformation of Confucian humanism. His five-volume collected works in Chinese was published in China in 2001. Most importantly, he has been instrumental in developing dialogue among civilization. Cultural China and Reflections on the Enlightenment Mentality of the Modern West Professor, I want to thank you. It is an honor to speak with you and for you to take time to have this conversation with us today. Thank you very much. I think uh, I feel privileged, uh, honored to have a chance to uh, exchange some ideas with you. Thank you so much. My first uh, curiosity and question is that um, as we have entered into this new millennia and century, uh, most of the world's major religions are primarily older than 15 centuries or more. Can we learn still something from these religions, from these old cultures, traditions? Um, do they have anything to say for the modern life, for the modern human being? I think you anticipate, anticipate my answer as yes, <laughs> but I will give you uh, some reason why. And I will even say, perhaps uh, 
arguably the most important vital resource available to the human community. And these great spiritual traditions have been characterized by the German philosopher Karl Jasper uh, shortly after the Second World War as the so-called Axial Age civilizations. They all occurred roughly 6th century BC to about 1 millennium BC. They occurred relatively independently and they continue to shape the uh, meaning of life of uh, most of humanity for at least uh, a thousand years or more. Uh, these traditions refer to Judaism in the Middle East and of course evolved into Christianity and Islam. Islam as the most recent of the great uh, spiritual traditions and also the most vibrant in the sense of uh, it's spreading all over the world, the fastest growing spiritual tradition in the world today. But also the, uh, the Greek tradition. Normally we consider Greek uh, tradition as uh, philosophical rather than religious. But this is uh, probably a misconception because the Greek tradition with Socrates, um, you know, Plato and Aristotle, uh, not to mention the Stoics and so forth, um, have been profoundly spiritual. So uh, how do the uh, French scholar characterize uh, his own book as philosophy, as a way of life, spiritual exercises from Socrates to uh, Michel Foucault, this is the Greek yeah. tradition. But then you have uh, the tradition in China, Taoism and Confucianism, and in South Asia, uh, Hinduism and Buddhism. Yeah. So Karl Jasper said uh, in 1948, uh, there are four great uh, paradigmatic uh, personalities. And uh, I, I say at least five, but anyway, Confucius, uh, Socrates, by um, implication, Plato and Aristotle, um, Jesus, uh, Buddha, and Muhammad. And uh, these people began with very humble lives, virtually no power, influence, or wealth. Yes. And yet, uh, for the last uh, centuries, ever since uh, um, the emergence of uh, human history as a conscious history rather than a pre modern history, and they've been great shapers of uh, the meaningful world that we live. Now we are confronted with uh, two major challenges. Uh, I think underlying these two major challenges is the question about the viability of human species. Can human beings continue to survive, not to, not to mention flourishing? And there are two ways uh, we know for sure, empirically proved, that the human species will end, will be terminated. One is a su sudden death. Uh, that's a nuclear holocaust, yes. totally man-made. The second one would be a gradual demise. Now, again, man-made, that's an ecological crisis. Air pollution, water, food, and so forth. So how, how do we deal with the situation? We need to deal with the situation from a very fundamental way of rethinking the human. What does it mean by being human? And how can we do that? Uh, can we simply say, Ever since the uh, 17th, 18th century, with the emergence of the modern West, with enlightenment, we have science and technology, market economy, even uh, democratic polities, all these great institutions like the multinational corporations, civil and uh, military bureaucracies, uh, civil societies. And we're now in the age of the internet. Uh, we're so greatly endowed with incredible power. We can travel anywhere we, we want to go. We can talk to anyone instantaneously. We can transfer a great deal of effort, even without, you know, without concern for anything. With all this power, and the destructiveness of being human is uh, obvious. Uh, if you ask the people today, if you're safer anywhere, then uh, they are for, you know, imagine they're forefathers and so forth. We know we are we're vulnerable. Uh, the recent case uh, in uh, Denver yes. show uh, normally a person who is uh, considered as educated, right? highly educated right. person in one of the most uh, celebrated industrial societies, uh, the, the land of freedom, the land of opportunity, yes. and land of the dream for the rest of the world, America, who could come and uh, cruelly and uh, so heartlessly murdered innocent people. To glorify himself, his ego, uh, totally obsessed with uh, evil—I mean, evil ideas. Anyway, 
So this is a situation where the rethinking of the human needs to be deeply rooted in uh, the best possible spiritual tradition we can imagine. Mm -hmm. So the resurface of these great traditions, uh, certainly including Islam, but also my tradition, Confucianism and so forth, yes. is so obvious to everyone. And therefore the relevance of these great spiritual traditions for the 21st century uh, is beyond doubt. Anyone who has some doubt about it, you know, like some leaders in, uh, um, in uh, all over the world, uh, turn out to be narrow-minded, uh, shallow, and uh, probably insensitive. On behalf of uh, WTPN and Building Bridges San Francisco, I'm Mark Mosini, and I want to thank our audience for listening in tonight. Um, so have a good evening or a good day wherever you're watching and listening to this uh, broadcast. Thank you.